Hello guys, welcome to my channel. I hope everything is okay in your life. This video series has been prepared for general features of the classes in video to be conveyed to you by the class masters in appropriate way. The information contained in this video is limited and will not be a detailed guide. In the content you will meet, there will be an interview about the structure of the class in general. If you have friends around you who have questions about this class, they will probably be able to find general answers. The purpose of interview is to convey convey the class to you in a short and fun way. First, you will watch official trailer of the class, then we will start chatting with our guests. During the chat, I will add as many images as possible and try to provide you with a better information transfer. I hope you enjoy these contents. All these and similar classes will be completed and published in time. If you do not want to miss the moment when they are published, do not forget to subscribe to the channel and activate the notification button. Enjoy watching. Delore La Silvia. over my kingdom of Calphia.
Well, hello guys. Today's guest is Liantha for Nova Class. Welcome, Liantha. How are you? I'm good. Good. How are you? Thank you so much. May you please introduce yourself? Who is Liantha? I'm Liantha. I'm a casual YouTuber that makes some guides and PvP music videos for Succession Nova. Though I have been playing Black Desert since the closed beta test on North America many years ago. How did you find video from a friend or website? How do you go into MMORPG games? How did you decide to play? I, I've always been into MMORPGs. It's my main gaming genre as I really love the idea of an immersive fantasy world and being able to share it with friends and building a community. I usually check out any new MMO that's launching and when video was first being teased, the graphics and combat look were really unlike anything I'd ever seen before and it hooked me from the beginning. How many years have you been playing your class? Is this your first class? Are there any other classes that you start the game with or tried. So I made my Nova when it first launched in 2020, though I didn't make it my main until the season was over and most of the major bugs and nerfs seemed to be worked out. Uh, and since I've been playing BDO for about six years, I've definitely played a number of other classes before Nova, with my main ones being Succession Sork, uh, Dark Knight, and Witch, though I've casually played a few others as well. For Nova, I really wanted to try a class that was different than my previous kind of assassin style ones, and really liked the idea of playing a slightly slower and more control-oriented defensive class. And I'd always I always love classes with pets and lots of minions in other games. Do you think your class is newbie friendly? How would you rate your class out of 10 in terms of difficulty in PvE and also PvP? So Nova is a really unique class, unlike any other in Black Desert, as she's basically like two classes rolled into one. She has the versatility to be able to swap between those depending on the activity that you'd like to do. So for someone who's new to the game and isn't really sure what kind of combat style they want, whether they want a fast class or a slower class, she's a great option to try as she has both capabilities through her awakening and succession specializations. Unfortunately, getting to this point will require you to level up using the slower pre-awakening skills before you really get to see this playstyle difference in action. So I would recommend anyone try her first as maybe a trial character or a seasonal character to just really see if it's as specifically for the specializations, as I mentioned, they're basically like different classes in themselves. So for Awakening, she's really easy to pick up and play around with for, you know, some of the easier grind spots. She's fun and flashy. She can dip around between different packs of mobs really quickly. For PvP and, you know, some of the more medium to harder grind spots, it is a little bit of a different story. She's got a lot of fast abilities, which means, you know, lots of uh, quick key inputs and uh, a sense of timing are really required. So this can make it a little bit more intensive than other classes. Classes, and certainly a little bit more uh, work to kind of pick up in that regard. So generally, you know, early game grinding and just kind of picking up and having fun. Uh, she's really quite easy. I'd say, you know, probably closer to two out of a 10, but on the PVP side and, you know, some of the more challenging grind spots, I'd say quite a bit more difficult and closer to a seven out of 10. Other things to keep in mind as, you know, a new player, uh, you know, positioning can be, I often hear of new Awakened Nova players talking about how they overshoot their target because the class is such bursty mobility that it can take a little bit of getting used to, to figuring out you know how far you can go with some skills and kind of what the hitbox is when you're trying to attack enemies. Another thing to keep in mind as a new player is that when you're in Awakening, and you're, especially when you're grinding, you tend to burn through the durability on your gear faster than other classes, and most new players don't have a tent right off the bat, so this can make it a little bit inconvenient for some extended grinding sessions or make the tent feel a little more obligated uh, of a purchase. Overall, I'd say she's, you know, in terms of ease of, ease of use, she's about 5 out of 10 for PvE, as she really isn't too bad to pick up and play around with, though it does take some practice to kind of get a hang of her rotations and her combos and movement. For PvP, I'd say she's quite a bit more complicated and would be more of a 7 out of 10 in terms of difficulty for new players, mainly because she has two very different skill trees in the pre-awakening and the awakening kit and kind of learn how to, you know, flex between those two as needed. Now for succession, which again is a very different play style compared to awakening and it leans more heavily into that pre-awakened skill kit using your shield and your morning star. Succession has a decent amount of skills in her combo um, and she She's got really approachable key inputs, so uh, she's fairly easy for new players to kind of pick up and play for PvE, though keeping in mind that her efficiency without some of the you know, proper combo usage is definitely going to be lower than other classes. Her complexity comes in really in learning her cancels, you know, which skills to use, which cancels to not use in certain situations, as well as, you know, understanding the positioning and the role, as she also has some issues with, you know, range and targets and landing hits when you're too close to your target. Another aspect for succession that you would have to 
be aware of as, as a new new player is really understanding how Axion and the pets work, specifically when it comes to the health drain mechanic that Axion, your big bat demon, which is part of the succession uh, skill tree, really brings into that class. It adds a little bit of learning as, you know, if you're grinding in a lower a lower level spot or, you know, such as Poly Forest, for example, you're, you're clearing through mobs pretty quickly. You're going to actually burn through your health just from using Axion and you might actually kill yourself if you're not careful. So it's definitely recommended to, you know, be aware of that and bring in uh, elixirs or drafts if you don't have uh, something like an infinite potion, which most new players would not, um, to help compensate for those things. Overall, I'd say for PvE, it's, you know, 3 out of 10 is it's pretty easy to, to pick up the class for fun and relaxed grind. You definitely don't have as much issues with trying to survive things, but it is closer to a 7 out of 10 to really get any meaningful trash numbers, so don't expect to be uh, pulling in the, the money with this class. Now for PvP on the succession side, as a new player, it really does change quite a bit. There are other classes which would definitely, definitely be better for newer players in terms of PvP, is there's just a lot of nuances involved in playing Succession Nova. You don't have access to a lot of iframes or, you know, fast movement, so it is very important to be able to understand how to play in certain 1v1 situations as well as, you know, larger fights if those things grow. Her block and protections uh, can be an uphill challenge for certain matchups, so in, in, in certain cases you'll do great if the enemy doesn't have a grab, but in other cases uh, it can be a little bit more tricky. So in a lot of the cases for PvP, your, your situation is going to change and your slower skill set and limited mobility are going to be a challenging thing to work through if you're not familiar with the kit. Do you prefer Awakening or Succession right now and why? So I love the look and feel for both. They're <laughs> beautiful classes. Are beautiful. It's a beautiful class with two different specializations, but I personally prefer to play Succession. I love the ice theme and I love the idea of all of the minions popping out in the skills and it feels really cool. And the class also has a lot of really interesting lore behind it, which is something uh, new that they did with this class when it was first released. Personally, I wasn't a fan of the pre-awakening play style when it first came out, but the Succession skills made it feel a lot more fun to play and they really change how you approach that style. Thank you. So damage reduction or evasion? So damage reduction or evasion. For generally both uh, Awakening and uh, Succession, DR is preferred. This is a class that has no you know, innate evasion, passives or buffs. It also doesn't really have a strong evasion offhand that it can swap to. So yeah, unlike you know a, a wizard who can use a parrying dagger for you know boosting their evasions, Nova just doesn't have those, so those same gear options. Additionally, with Succession in particular, you're already lacking accuracy on you know your skill so generally swapping to evasion would mean you're losing some of that and it's just not worth it in, in favor of a standard B DR build. Thank you. You know I published a PvE tier list video on YouTube and there is a page related with Nova. May you please analyze it in general? How accurate this page? So Taking a look at Awakening, um, honestly, it seems about right in, in all areas here, as kind of what I had mentioned earlier. But I'd argue for Succession, there are definitely, I think, a few changes. So the early game <laughs> spots, I would say, should probably be closer to a zero. The really early game means you're using your pre-awaken kit before you even get Succession, which is very, very slow and clunky. Um, succession actually gives you a passive for attack speed, so it does help a little bit there and gives you some more, a little bit more mobility. But it is still, you'd have to consider the Axion and his health drain mechanic which can, you know, definitely hurt you in grinding the early game spots. Crowded bots, I would say she should be closer to 2.5 to 3, given the, some of the examples you gave, as predominantly just her mobility really holds her back in, in that pack-to-pack -pack grind. Uh, the last one, uh, I think the mobility column, I think I mentioned it, is should pretty much be zero, as she's very significant stamina issues, and uh, typically she's not going to be able to, to move too freely um, through issues like body block and the terrain as well. Yeah, I just want to be more merciful for succession of what we all know that this class is very bad on pve i just want to be more copium thing you know <laughs> so let's make it more detailed may you please give us a bit information about awakening pve early game spots like one shot type spots mid game spots more like you need to pull mobs like raya stars and bloody monastery thornwood forest orc and etc and end game spots like gaipin olun etc trolls crypt even if you tried i don't know so definitely Awakening for early game spots, she's really good. She's got a very fast skill set, pack-to-pack -pack mobility, so if you're 
for example, grinding Polly's forest. Uh, it's it's a lot of fun. It's really flashy, and it would be you know pretty much on par, I would say, with Musa and other kind of fast classes in that format. Now, when it comes to you know mid game grind spots, you know more like Star's End or Bloody Monastery, these are areas that it'll depend a little bit on the size of the rotation and the number of skills that you need to kill your target. So gear does play a little bit into that. In general, she'll do pretty good in places where she can use around three skills to kill the monsters, such as you know most orcs rotations and Bloody Monastery. Um, and then you can move on to the next pack pretty quickly. Now for harder grind spots, this she does fall off a little bit more because of some of the skills. She needs more skills to kill these monsters. And then she runs into some cooldown issues. Unfortunately, at this point, she's not really able to benefit as well from her mobility in some of these spots. Um, if you think of Gyphon underground, you don't really need a lot of mobility there to you know move between those, those uh, monsters. So she doesn't benefit as much from that area. That said, uh, kind of going back all the way to the far end, things like Crypt of Resting Thought, which is currently the most difficult grind spot in the game. She can do okay, but she still isn't as good as, you know, other classes there, such as Striker. So what about Awakening PvP? 1v1, 1vx, 5v5, I mean, I don't know, Solar, and large scale, Node War, Siege War. So with Awakening in 1v1, um, she's pretty good overall, as she can, you know, easily disengage from a fight and try and control it with some of her speed and her vacuums. This really does make her annoying to fight against, as she can, you know, basically focus on the, you know, single target without having to worry about stray CCs. She also does technically have a grab that she can use if she's fighting, you know, say another block class, but it is uh, fairly risky as using this puts her into the slower pre-awakened form of her kit um, and can be pretty telegraphed as well. The downside of her, her 1v1 is she doesn't really have any protected CCs in her awakening kit outside of the ones that you would choose from her set of core skills, which generally means you're giving up another <laughs> another thing that you might want, such as protection on another skill. And this combined with her Excel mechanic can make her somewhat predictable if the enemy's paying attention. So if you're fighting another class and they know how Nova's mechanics work, pretty easy to kind of either run away and wait out their timers for Excel or to, you know, use other protected abilities to try and mitigate some damage. In 1vx, uh, her greatest advantage is surprise attacks, as she can, again, very quickly engage, throw out some damage, and disengage just as fast. You'll often see this as a playstyle that is shown in a lot of uh, PvP videos for Awaken Nova, where they're darting in and, you know, just hitting a bunch of people and getting some damage and then darting back out. Unfortunately though, when her opponents are anticipating the attack, then she does suffer a fair bit as a lot of her skills are unprotected and so her damage has, you know, the chance of getting interrupted or things like her self buffs may have run out of duration because those are difficult to maintain as well. This can can also result in just lowering her damage and not giving her the, the burst that she needs to kind of burn down a target. Additionally, and this is more of a, a, a knowledge and kind of experience thing, she she does have a mix of smaller circular and conal ALB abilities that require to have very specific positioning in order to hit her targets. So again, as a new player, you might not uh, quite get that down, but as you get more experience, it'll be something that it becomes a little bit easier. This can be, you know, fine in PvE, but can be difficult to predict uh, in PvP skirmishes where, you know, the enemy's moving all around and trying to hit everyone with those skills. Now for 5v5, um, you know, this is more commonly seen as, as a lot of the arenas and tournament type style, uh, but even just, you know, 5v5 skirmish. With a good team, Awakening can do quite well here. She can set up uh, kills using her vacuums and some of these, you know, quick surprise attacks on enemies while she herself can fairly easily you know catch up and play off her, her teammates cc's so that she can you know get in some quick damage provided that her teammates can still peel for her if she gets caught so being able to switch targets pretty rapidly is something that she does pretty well um, and being able to kind of flex on where that damage goes now as for large scale unfortunately awakening paul she falls off pretty hard in large scale fights as there's just simply too many skills flying around that are going to catch her in an unprotected ability so in these situations generally she'll do a little bit better in like smaller flex type groups that are in you know this large scale fight and can try and take advantage of you know either her speed or you know smaller groups of people where she can put herself into a more 5v5 or smaller skirmish situation for siege in particular pushing a castle would be very very challenging as awakening she's just really not able to freely move around in certain areas uh, without getting caught you know definitely small hallways and corners are not going to be her friend here as for defending uh, she does have some utility that she can offer with uh, the ice wall and the vacuum so be 
being able to force enemies into choke points and kind of keep them there. But however, outside of that, it's really, you know, one of her biggest things is her mobility and that's cramped when playing on rooftops and smaller ledges, which is fairly common in castle defense. Um, and she has almost no ranged abilities that can hit targets below her. So she's uh, not going to have a great time. Thank you. May you please give us a bit information about succession PV? Same like the first question. Ah, so I won't sugarcoat it. Uh, PA recently admitted that she was the lowest performing class in PvE, and while the recent PvE damage buffs uh, since then have improved her grinding potential, it is still on the lower end compared to most other classes, uh, keeping in mind that a lot of other classes also got buffed at the same time. <laughs> that said, she is definitely a fun grinder, and she's pretty forgiving for most of the harder uh, grind mechanics due to just her simply tanky block stance. Now, because of how slow her skills and stamina cost are on um, you know very limited mobility she's pretty terrible in one shot spots because her succession uses axion for increased damage and his skills consume some of your hp you're actually going to kill yourself grinding polyforest if you're not careful because you're going to kill the enemies so fast that you're not actually going to have any chance to get that health back and you're not going to be able to keep up with your traditional um, potions it is a bit silly to have to unsummon him in grind spots like this just to be able to grind without any issues or using expensive of drafts. So generally I would recommend anyone just to swap to Awakening if they're going to grind, uh, you know, a lower level grind spot like that. Even if you have no idea what you're doing in Awakening, it will still be better than grinding Succession. <laughs> now for medium difficulty spots, it's a little bit more varied. So the Nova Succession has a set of command skills, and these are the main ones you'd want to use while grinding. They're a mix of damage from the Nova herself, as well as her minions. So unfortunately, the minions don't really inherit the Nova's, some all of the Nova's, Nova's stats, such as the crit damage, and they also don't have their own uh, stat. So as a result, the combo damage does feel quite a bit lower in PvE compared to other classes. And she still suffers, unfortunately, from a lot of the mobility and stamina issues when moving from pack to pack and can, and can very easily get caught on bumpy terrain. Generally, spots like Stars and Towers, where you can stay in one place, would be much better than uh, a larger grind rotation like Sakraya or some of the Orcs rotations as a result. For high-end spots, again, she still suffers from the same issues, though generally there are a few more of the stationary spots available, um, such as Gyphon, which is a great spot for Succession Nova, and, and Trolls. And these don't require nearly as much mobility, so they can kind of take advantage of uh, her tankiness and her ability to survive some mechanics in favor of, you know, trading off some of that need to move around. Um, overall, if you're grinding with a Sec Nova, it should be fairly straightforward to pick up, but you should expect to get anywhere from 30 to 60% less trash loot compared to other classes with the same gear. And trying to close this gap and get a little bit more and squeezing more trash out will just require a lot of work. That said, Sec Nova is one of the highest survival classes in PvE. She's very, very protected and her block can withstand some heavy hit mechanics that would otherwise kill some other classes. And she's also, you know, pretty decent at defending her grind spot due to really good, you know, 1v1 PvP potential. Thank you. What about Succession PvP? So touching on that a bit more, it's, you know, in 1v1, if you have knowledge of, you know, the other classes and just, you know, understand the general PvP mechanics in the game, uh, she's fairly straightforward to pick up and do well in a 1v1 situation against most classes. Um, that said, there are some, you know, direct counter classes like Striker, Mystic, and Ninja, which can be very challenging to fight due to you know, them either having lots of protections or multiple grabs, or in the case of Ninja especially, just simply a faster speed class. This is, again, especially true if they're familiar with the Sec Nova matchup, uh, as our skills would be very, very telegraphed and can be predictable. In 1BX, uh, she can still do fairly well here if she can eat, keep eyes on her targets and take advantage of the uh, terrain uh, to make, you know, maintain good defensive positioning, really helping to support her allies with, you know, CCs and large AoE damage. But again, this is a little more dependent on having a good team to help heal and heal. Otherwise, she'll likely die without offering much to the group in these situations. For 5v5, this is pretty similar to 1vx and skirmishes. In some of these situations, she can actually act as bait. Uh, and in many cases, you know, providing her team plays around her and peels if needed, she's able to really set up some CCs for her allies and can do this for both melee and ranged targets. So it's pretty versatile in that regard. That said, she'll definitely have difficulty keeping up with faster classes and this comes you know both chasing down an enemy as well as just simply trying to keep up with you know faster teammates um, and you know overall would really require the team play around her and the more enemy targets there are the more difficult it will be to maintain you know the appropriate distance and 
uh, protection against back attacks, as well as just, you know, soaking the damage from so many different sources. So for large scale, I main a Sec Nova and a Siege Guild currently, and I've done so since shortly after she was released. Her, her role here is really unique and very different depending on the type of Siege or large scale content. She does best in a situation such as Castle Defense, where she can utilize her Ice Wall to create choke points and block enemy forces, and utilize nooks and edges of walls to provide some protection against back attacks. Outside of this role, she does well in areas such as Castle Hallways, which limit enemy mobility, allowing her large AoEs to fill the space and concentrate her damage to hit all of her targets. She can also offer some utility with being able to command pets to CC her targets on high ledges as long as she can target them, as well as being able to move forward through <laughs> a large amount of AoE CCs. One of my favorite things to do as a Sec Nova is you know, <laughs> ice wall an enemy push and watch as all of my allies escape the safety while I hold the door. On open field fighting uh, type of sieges, it is pretty difficult for Sec Nova, unfortunately just because of her mobility being the biggest issue. She can use about four dashes before running out of stamina, which makes it really challenging to keep up with a main attack force. Making matters worse, if her block is fully broken, then none of her mobility skills will work due to that mechanic of, you know, block break. And it's essentially a death sentence. Um, there's definitely been times where I've literally walked fully unprotected just to try and get away from a fight because there was nothing else I could use uh, in terms of my skills. When a geared appropriately for her strengths, um, Sucknova can definitely survive a fair bit of damage with her block and the amount of SA skills really allows her to be rarely CC'd outside of a grab. Uh, that said, uh, she is pretty much required to soak all of that damage because she only has one short iframe on a longer cooldown and limited mobility to run away from an enemy. This can definitely be an issue if you're fighting uh, a another group or an enemy that is either significantly overgearing you or, or outnumbers you to a great degree. Additionally, once she takes damage, she lacks the ability to recover her health in any way and, and Axion <laughs> consuming health on skills actually makes it even worse. So she does uh, have, you know, extreme reliance on her allies to heal her, um, you know, Shies, uh, Witches, and Wizards. She does need to be paired with one of these to really perform moderately well in this environment, uh, and is generally considered to be bottom tier in Siege overall, outside of her few defensive utility so skills, um, such as the Ice Wall, which, all, honestly, other classes like Shy can also do, but those classes have other benefits to the guild, uh, such as the buffs. Overall, uh, she is not generally a class that you'd see topping the kill charts in large scale fights. She has slower and lower damage output compared to some other classes and is extremely dependent on having a competent team to support and play around her CC and control capabilities, as well as, you know, ensuring that she has a more tank specific gear setup before she can really offer any meaningful value in PvP fights. Typically, if you see a Sec Nova in a Seed Guild, it is because they really love the class. Thank you. I think you summarized Nova very well and those information are enough for all viewers. Let's talk about game itself. What do you think about video for current situation from past until now? I think honestly the game is in a great state right now in comparison to how it was when it first launched. Um, obviously they, they you know make changes over time but in particular recently it's a, a large number of quality of life updates which were long overdue and very much appreciated. I really hope they continue to look at these things and try and make the game more enjoyable to play and really minimize and some of those smaller, more frustrating things that can happen during your everyday play session. In particular, I uh, really appreciate the changes around offering dying a capability for Orzeka and Nuver costumes, as I have both and have long wished to be able to customize them a bit more, especially considering the amount of time and money I spent to try and get them. One of the other things that I find a little bit odd is currently we have some areas such as the achievements, which are extremely outdated. It's a bit surprising that these have not been updated already and, and really could help, you know, drive some benefits to the game, as well as other things such as the church buffs that don't really offer any life skill variation. You know, currently we've got a church buff for EXP, attack stats, defensive stats, but really nothing for life skills. So it does seem to be a little bit odd that this is missed when we have all of those others. If you have a chance to add new feature to video or change something, what would it be? For Nova Balance specifically, I would definitely want them to take a look at some of the recent forum posts, specifically by Strega, around the changes to Suck Nova. An extremely well-written outline of some of the changes, which a lot of Suck Nova community players have agreed upon and would really think to address some of the both the stigma the class gets and you know why people may not uh, like to fight against it as well as just making it a more enjoyable class to play but outside of some of those balance changes I'd really love to see some more quality of life changes such as addressing some of the FPS issues I've got a pretty powerful PC and it is definitely frustrating to see some things that just tank the performance such as you know flame shots from cannons and some dust particles from player skills I'm personally pretty sensitive to those 
those is it hurts my eyes. So it really brings me out of the immersion of the game when those things happen. I'd also really love for them to keep looking at things that are annoying for players to deal with, especially during node war fights and siege, such as being able to keep the toggle for node war borders on even after death, uh, as it's definitely a pain to have to reset it every single time you die. Other things I think they could look at is, you know, improving things that they've already been releasing, such as adjusting the new fairy skill that auto consumes elixirs and foods to stay on after death. This is a great addition to the game, but it feels like it's missing the mark a little bit during, a, you know, a node war or siege where you die so frequently throughout the fight and you, you know, constantly have to re-enable the setting. Other areas I'd like to see is being able to, you know, make it easier to mount horses and interact with NPCs while in block stance. This affects Suck Nova quite a bit as she's got a lot of skills that would put her into block stance and it's really big pain to have to manually step out of this stance just to be able to mount your horse, for example. And one of my personal biggest pet peeves, and I'd love to see them fix this, uh, not only for Nova, but for many of the other classes, is giving us a long cape option. As a big BDO fashion enjoyer, it honestly kills me that there is no long cape costumes for Nova, and it really ruins some of these costumes that are shared uh, across all classes to have the uh, cape, as I call it. What is your advice for newbie or returning players, or whoever wants to re-roll to Nova? Main advice is this game is a marathon, it's not a sprint. You know, take your time, enjoy the, the multitude of different systems, and explore the world. Try to pay attention and take advantage of some of the in-game events as they can really help boost your progression, you know, save you both time and sometimes money in order to make some progress in the game. Additionally, I would say watch for sales in the Pearl Shop if you're unsure if you want to actually spend any money on the game, as especially around, you know, the game's anniversary and, you know, Heidel Ball and other uh, events, these tend to have quite a big uh, amount of sales around those times. Now, for Nova specifically, uh, you know, newbie returning players who've maybe never, never, you know, played the class before or considering it, just try her out with a trial character or, or you know, better yet, a season. And don't judge her succession skills based on the playtime that you have, from, you know, from 1 to 56 in her Prey Awaken kit. It definitely feels a lot better once you unlock succession, though, in, like with most classes, you really don't see how the class performs and feels when, until, you know, closer to 60. It won't be for everyone, but it's definitely worth a shot to try it. In addition, Awakening just feels like an entirely separate class in how it plays and feels, so it can be really, really nice to have this versatility, and uh, as a new player, it's definitely not something to uh, scoff at. Okay, we are coming towards the end of the interview, and is there anything you would like to add? You know, really appreciate the opportunity to share some love and <laughs> a little bit of frustration with this class. Nova is definitely one of the classes that has a fairly small community. Um, however, it's a very unique class, which many of us, of us just love to play. So I'd say, you know, if anyone's considering trying a Nova, I had a few beginner guides on some skill tips and gear progression, which may be useful. And there's definitely a few more advanced guides out there that can be used to, if you want to understand the mechanics a bit more, uh, whether that's to, to fight a Nova or to play one. Outside of that, I'd recommend anyone, you know, just check out the Nova class discord for, uh, for more info and, you know, be able to chat with fellow Nova enthusiasts. I want to say thank you. You accepted my invitation and you shared all the knowledge that you know about Nova. Thank you so much. You should definitely check her YouTube channel. And this might be the funniest interview for me. You didn't hear it, but I laughed too much. She studied amazingly in her <laughs> lesson. Thank you so much. It was amazing. All right, guys, do not forget. Video is just a game. Have a nice game.